In this video, we're going to discuss stereoisomers, and specifically diastereomers. So recall that stereoisomers are isomers that have the same connections, that is, the same constitution, but different three-dimensional positions of the atoms in space, different configuration. The broadest class of stereoisomers are called diastereomers. Diastereomers are stereoisomers that are not mirror images, and this point about being not mirror images may seem odd. Why, why would we start with not mirror images? As it turns out, being a mirror image, two isomers that are mirror images of each other that are not the same, have unique properties, and we're going to talk about those a little bit later in class. They're what are called enantiomers. Diastereomers have the same connections, they have the same constitution, but cannot be superimposed perfectly. This means they're non-identical. A simpler way to say that they cannot be superimposed perfectly, is that the two structures are non-identical. And for diastereomers, it's important to keep in mind that the two structures are not mirror images. If they are mirror images, but they are non-identical, they're what are called enantiomers. So let's look now at an example of a diastereomeric pair, a pair of molecules that are diastereomers of one another. Platinum, in combination with two amine ligands and two fluorines, gives a square planar complex with a structure that looks like this as one possibility. However, another possible structure that has the same connections, that is the same bonds, but different arrangements of the atoms in space, positions the two fluorine ligands on opposite sides of the two ammonia ligands. Since the geometry is square planar and the ligands are fixed in their positions, these two structures are inequivalent. They have the same bonds, there are two NPT bonds and two FPT bonds in both structures, but they have different spatial positions of the atoms. And in particular, if we focus on, for example, the angle between the two platinum fluorine bonds, in the black structure we have a 90 degree angle, whereas in the blue structure we have a 180 degree angle. These two structures are not mere images of one another, and we can see that, for example, if we reflect this structure through an imaginary mirror right here. When we do this, we see that in the mirror image, the angle between the two PTF bonds is still 180 degrees. So we haven't managed to change that angle to 90 degrees just by the reflection, and so, and so the black and blue structures are not related as mirror images. This means that the two compounds shown are diastereomers, and diastereomers are the most general class of stereoisomers in the sense that most stereoisomeric pairs are diastereomeric pairs, since most molecules are not mirror images of one another, if that makes sense. Bottom line here is that the connections between the atoms are the same in both structures, but the positions of atoms in space are different, and the structures are not mirror images, so these are diastereomers. This particular pair of diastereomers exhibits a kind of stereoisomerism that's fairly common, in which two groups find themselves either on the same side of the remainder of a molecule or on opposite sides. You may hear this referred to as cis-trans isomerism, we'll talk about what these terms mean in a moment, or geometric isomerism is another term that's used to describe this pair of isomers. In any event, the important difference here is that two of the groups find themselves either close to one another, locked in a relatively close position, or locked in a position where they're relatively far away. In this square planar coordination chemistry context, the compound in which identical ligands occupy positions that are 90 degrees apart is known as the cis isomer, while the compound in which identical ligands occupy positions that are across from one another, in other words, the two PTF bonds here are sort of bisected by the ammonia and platinum atoms, this is known as the trans isomer. The way I remember this is that trans means across, and we find the two fluorine ligands across from one another in this structure, separated by a bond angle of 180 degrees, while cis indicates that those two ligands are relatively close to one another. Cis-trans isomerism is also observed in octahedral complexes in which four ligands are identical and two ligands are of a different type but are the same as each other, something like ml 4 X2. A good example of that would be, for example, this cobalt complex with two chlorines in what we might think of as axial positions, and then four amine ligands 
in the equatorial plane, quote unquote, we might say. This is an octahedral complex with two chlorines, X2, and four amine ligands for the L4. There's another way to position the two chlorine ligands. Rather than having them both in axial positions, we could put one of the chlorines in an axial position and another in a quote-unquote equatorial position, say right here, although the four equatorial positions are equivalent. That would mean we'd need to put an amine ligand down here in the other axial position, and the remaining two positions would still be occupied by amine ligands. Notice that all we've really done here to generate the blue isomer from the red is exchange the position of this chloride ligand and this NH3 group. And furthermore, we should recognize that the CLCOCL -CL bond angle has gone from 180 degrees in this black structure on the left to 90 degrees in this structure on the right. And it may be a little bit difficult to visualize this 90 degrees. Just remember that the entire equatorial plane right here is 90 degrees to the axial positions. And so the CLCOCL -CL bond angle here is indeed 90 degrees. Note the correspondence with the square planar example we saw before. This black structure on the left is the trans isomer because the two chlorines are across from one another. Here they're bisected by the equatorial plane. While in the blue case, the chlorines are relatively close to one another. This is the cis isomer. In general, diastereomers have different physical properties because they actually have different internal distances between the atoms in their structures. In the example shown here, the two chlorines are closer to one another in the cis isomer than they are in the trans isomer, and that means we should expect different, for example, dipole moments for the molecule, different melting and boiling points, and different reactivity. This particular complex that you're looking at is known as cisplatin or transplatin. The cis isomer, cisplatin, is effective against certain forms of cancer, and it works by binding to DNA. In fact, the two chloride ligands are displaced by basic nitrogen atoms in the nitrogenous bases of the DNA. This causes a change in the shape of the DNA and a kink that prevents the DNA from being replicated or repaired. So applying cisplatin to tumor DNA causes a disruption of DNA replication and repair. However, the trans isomer is inactive because the positions of these two chloride ligands are incompatible with the helical structure of DNA. This is a fairly unique application of transition metal chemistry, but one broader point that I want to impart is that these two diastereomers have different physical properties and reactivity by virtue of the fact that they are diastereomers.